one thing we want to get a lot better at because right now we're talking to marketing directors, well, you guys talking to marketing directors that still want the TV ad. But the reality is, online, we can get you, we know exactly who they are, these people, if we want to. So actually, it's much more quantifiable than any of the other media. Because yes, the TV is on, the ad may be playing, but am I actually watching it? Who knows? This is a sort of the, the, the endless debate over the numbers. Whereas online, we know exactly who they are and what they're doing. And I think the marketing director of the future will have his MBA from whatever, and will be looking for an agency that is telling them the numbers. When we present all these wonderful interactions that I've spent, the guy just goes, oh, you know, what does it mean? Yeah. You know, how does it convert into sales? And that's their big issue, because you know, for 30 years or whatever it was, they were able to look at isolation, uh, isolated cases and media impacts in certain times and see some kind of end result from sales. And you know, they struggle, they're still struggling. It's only if you're a direct e-commerce business that they're able to isolate out the results. I mean, just something like, say, the, the, the balloon race, I mean, how, what were the kind of criteria for success for that? More than to generate sign-ups. I mean, look, very little of the orange work is direct in that, in that regard. Um, not that we don't do it, but, but most of the work comes out of kind of pure brand work. So in that case, it was really just about exposures. So, so you know, success was based on, on reach, really. There's a bit of a lack of, well, there's a huge lack of standardisation. And, and people still not knowing the difference between a you know an impression and a, and a click and a, you know all the, all these things. But then I think there's another dimension to that that that's, that's just this sort of cultural thing of not understanding the weight of things. You know, and like like I mentioned earlier, sort of you know if you create something that a, a deeper interaction or something that's interesting or something that doesn't conform to the you know to the norms that people come across it, it's going to make a bigger impression. But you know how do you how can you how can you put a figure on that? Mm. I think clients are. You know, subdued or, or a little bit res uh, hesitant to plunge more money into it because I think the initial education that started years ago was um, was just about very traditional digital advertising, and so I think that you know there is a lot of understanding that you can have a knowledge of who's there and what they're looking at and, and demographics, etc. But I think you see that there's a lot, uh, a lot more education that has to happen in terms of. Um, you know, if it's just a traditional digital advertising relative to something that's new and fresh and that has more content behind it, or is something that's very geared towards this specific campaign, that that will increase dramatically in terms of the numbers. And I think those are the numbers that need to be explained. And I think those are the numbers that need to be, um, you know, sort of go, going through a re-education process. Because I think, you know, I, I see, you know, media agencies, my share specifically, or Group M's digital spend has gone from. 2% to 7% or something over the last three years, which is still tiny. I mean, I think that client, it, it should be no brainers. It should be just like, like companies should spend money like this, and they should get out of television. And I hate television um, because you cannot, you know, understand where these people are, and they're they're going much more online. But uh, I think that we've seen, you know, every case we've done where um, there's been a traditional versus a not sort of a non-traditional digital. The the non-traditional digital just it kills it with the most basic things by a, a measure of like five times. And so, and if you really pull something behind it and you know maybe very targeted to the, the audience, I mean you can do a, a, a ten times or twenty times return versus just your, your basic uh, digital you know, banners or whatever using the same budget. I mean if you said I, I have this digital spend and it's just going to be this, but if I rethink it and use that same money, I can do a lot more. Yeah. You know? I mean, I have to admit to feeling rather sorry for clients in some ways, yeah, because it's, it, everything's so complex now. You know, it's, it, the old days it was, well, we'll go and shoot the commercial and maybe I'll get to go and spend a week on the beach somewhere nice and watch them shoot the commercial and then I'll see the posters and that's about it. And now they're being assaulted all the time with all these things that they have to know about and everybody's telling them that it's going to be my space, that's the thing you've got to do. No, no, it's Bebo, no, no, it's Facebook, no, no, it's Twitter. I mean, as agencies, do you see your, your, your role as, I don't know, in some ways just putting a bit of an arm around the car and actually saying, you know what, you don't have to do that. Don't, don't be chasing every kind of new thing that comes in. Let's actually really look at, at what's right for your business. Or is a temptation just to think internally sometimes, oh, we really want to do something with Facebook, maybe we can do something for this client here because they'll buy it. I mean, yeah, I where's say, the responsibility? There's a lot of risk of demonizing the client, and actually yeah. quite often the client is right. Ultimately, it's his money. 
And when it's a good idea, I mean, a lot of the time we get involved with, ah, this is the idea, but the client hasn't quite bought it yet, and the client's, you know, on the edge. And to be honest, the client's right. It's not a very good idea. It probably won't work. You know, and there is a lot of that. Like, the balloons you think are fantastic. You've got the client relationship, and they trust you. And that's something you've earned over time. They trust you, and you did a fantastic piece for them. And they, it's great to have a client that doesn't interfere. But a lot of the time, the, the client actually is right and understands that things that there's a process, and it takes time, and we get pushed a lot by all the agendas within the agency. You know, The account director has to get this account in the bag. The creative really wants to get his line. He really wants to do the thing. And we're like, OK, how is this going to get judged at the end? Because if you try to get sales, they just book a big button that says, go buy. Let's not keep them for three hours playing around. But it's, it's early days, and ultimately, we're all guilty of something. Because it's only, it's only 10 years old, so even the most experienced client has only made X amount of websites. And as long as we're all aiming in the right direction and cross-educating, you know, inshallah, it'll all get better. I didn't mention that um, the clients do come to us with preconceived notions, and when, we, when we're selling our, our ideas, uh, most of the time, or some of the time, they don't get it. Hence, we've got to sort of try to meet, meet um, their ideas versus our ideas. That's, that's how we, we sometimes try, try to, to say, okay, since you've got this idea, that, that your preconceived notion makes you feel safe. For us, it's a bit of a risk. So let's try and meet in the middle. That way, it sort of educates them to take that step further. And hence, maybe the, the next projects, they could just sort of invest um, a little bit more and to, I'll be much more pessimistic and, and to much grimmer picture. Um, <laughs> um, just to just answer to Patrick's point, I, mean, we're, I think we're all, we're all probably you know, sitting, on the, you know, sitting on some kind of you know, international jury at some point during the year. We get to see 10,000 uh, know, entrants, which, which are 10,000 of, of what people out there think are the best things on the internet. And, uh, and I think... I know, I mean, there's no way of testing it, but I'm sure most people who do these things are wasting their money at the moment. Well, I have to say, a few weeks ago, I um, interviewed P.I. Schunker, who looks after all the advertising and design work for Coca-Cola in North America. One of his big bugbears was agencies coming to him with executions rather than with the, with the, the idea to find out what his business model was and then help him solve it. And he did actually say that digital agencies were the worst for that. Digital agencies are... You know, but more often than not, we modelled on traditional agencies. It's sort of inherited some of those bad habits, so so we're not necessarily as in in, in, control, in touch, and, and we're not helping the client kind of you know understand the understand the market. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a massive problem. But it's fu it's a fundamental problem. Yeah, you know, on, on, and I think you, the first thing you say about you know people who tend to be at a senior enough level to be in, you know in control in most in most client side just don't have the experience. And, and, and not even the experience, just don't have a feel for it, which is even more, even more fundamental because, again, it's like, so you're going to go and run off and do this Facebook page and you're going to do what with it and how's that going to, like, not only how are you going to wire that into people's kind of, into, the, into their lives, but what is it going to mean, what does it going to feel like? The, the pressure that we've been getting from our clients, particularly in London, is, as, to put it bluntly, please hire some grown-ups. <laughs> Right, so please hire people that really understand our business mm. and talk sensibly to us, um, and that are engaged with the industry that you're in. Um, and yeah, we've just got to grow up. We've got to grow up. She's a certified avatar.